Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, my topic today is solving discontinuous uh, a deep learning based discontinuous scattering method for hyperbolic equations with discontinuous solutions and random uncertainties. The work is joined the work with Professor Jing and Professor Jing Ren Chen. And uh, uh, consider this kind of hyperbolic equations, ut plus gradient x, f omega u equals to z. It has several difficulties. First, it can generate shock waves, such as the uh, Burger equation without viscosity term. Also, there will be some randomness in the parameters or in the initial condition. When the stochastic is defeated in high dimension, there will be a cost of dimension, which prevents us from get a very accurate result. Therefore, we are considering about solving this problem with deep learning technology. So there are several ways to solve PDE with deep learning technology, for example, uh, the deep reason method we, uh, where we use the variational form of the epileptic equation and the galaxy method or PINN, which the previous speakers have uh, discussed it before. So the general idea of them uh, um, represents the numerical solution of the neural network. Uh, and defend the loose function as a constraint of the uh, network that need to satisfy. Then the PDE will become an optimization problem. Uh, and we can use different optimi optimizers to uh, find the optimal solution of the problem. However, towards our problem, our solution can have some discontinuity. Uh, but the uh, most, but the most activation function like the sigmoid, the tension edge, and the blue are continuous. The neural network will be continuous, and they will find out how to approximate a discontinuous uh, function accurately. Therefore, we are considering about um, uh, how to model a discontinuous function with neural network. Similar as the final volume method and or uh, uh, discontinuous galaxy method, we introduce discontinuous element basis. Take this one dimensional figure as an example. For each cell from xi to xi plus one, we use the um, piecewise constant basis. We take the value of the neural network at the middle point as the coefficient of the basis at this cell. And the progress can be formalized in a way like the Galactin formula, UH theta x equals to uh, summation of, over all cell in theta x i plus half by i x. And phi x is the basis function. Uh, now uh, uh, it's a piecewise constant, and we will discuss uh, piecewise linear afterward. Um, if we uh, and we can get the weak formula by multiply of test function v and integrate by part. At the boundary, we need some numerical flux, such as ring, uh, upwind flux and the golden knob flux, which is very typical in EG method. Um, so for the stochastic problem, we introduce the parameters of the stochastic into the neural network as input and uh, similar as before, we get the uh, weak formula for i, j, n here. I represents the i sphere and the j represents the j's order, j's order discontinuous basis and uh, n represents the time step n. And uh, uh, according to the weak formula, we can define the loose function as the uh, in, in the L2 things for ijn, we don't need to summation or ijn in each iteration, we can just um, uh, do Monte Carlo sampling over this index. So it's not very, uh, it don't cost many computational costs. 
uh, apart from the PDE, we also need to deal with the initial condition and the boundary condition. There are several ways to introduce the boundary condition constraints into the problem. The uh, one easy way is to add some penalty terms on the boundary. Mm. But this method is not very accurate because uh, you will find it hard to balance many terms in the uh, in the loose function in the loose function, uh, and also you can build an even neural network that satisfies the boundary condition exactly. And the third method uh, benefit from we introduced grid here. We just need to impose the uh, boundary condition or the initial condition on the on the cell. On the boundary cell. For example, uh, if we uh, in normal boundary condition, we can let the value on the zero cell because the values on the first cell and the values on the last cell equals to values on the n plus one cell. And for the periodical boundary condition, you can make the value of the zero cell equals to values on the n minus one cell and the values on the last cell equals the values on the first cell. Okay, here we introduce some numerical examples. Uh, first, we consider a deterministic linear conservation law, 2d pi ut minus summation k from one to d, uxk uh, equals to zero. And the d here means the dimension of the problem. It can be one, two, or three. And uh, we have, uh, initial condition and the periodical boundary condition. So we construct our solution, numerical solution as this one. The phi x is the uh, basis function and uh, we use u, uh, capital U to represent uh, this one. And this one is the coefficient of the basis function. And uh, since we use periodical boundary condition, we just let the zeros, uh, the zeros coefficients equals to n minus ones, and the n's coefficients equals to the first uh, coefficients. Then we can define the loose function. There are two ways we uh, we can uh, define loose function. One is the semi-discrete scheme. Where we, pres uh, where we preserve the time dependent gradient and uh, they can be calculated by the automatic gradient in PyTorch. And second, we use the fully discrete, uh, where uh, we use the forward order method to decrease the uh, time dependent uh, gradient. And uh, this example is in 3D. Mm. The result is shown in this uh, table. Um, the, we can, uh, if we fully decrease the equation, we can find the first order uh, convergence. But if we semi decrease the, um, if we see, use the semi decrease the formula, uh, um, the first order convergence will lose. And uh, you can see that the fully decreased method. Uh, always have a better result, better accuracy than the semi discrete one. And we can also find uh, when h is more, when the gradient is very far, the first order convergence we are totally lose. And we think this is because our neural network is not wide enough. Uh, if we choose a wider network like uh, it's 16 in 3D before, and we choose 200 now. And we can find the uh, first order convergence will be preserved until h equals to one over 614. That's before it can be only preserved until one over 160. Okay, also we consider the second order method by using the piecewise constant basis and the piecewise linear basis. And similar to before, we can get the loose function and uh, we optimize this problem and the result can be shown in this figure or in this table. 
uh, where we use dt equals to h square so that it's second order in time now. It's in time also. And we can find the convergence is over one order. And the following figure compared to the semi decreased uh, uh, method, which is the blue one, and the fully decreased first order method, which is the purple line. And the second order method is the red line. And then we can see that the second order method really helped us to get a better result for the linear conservation uh, problem. And the second example here is a Burgers equation with initial condition here in the reflect boundary condition. Mm. So the solution is constructed like this. Numerical solution is constructed like this. When t equals to zero, we just give them the exact uh, own, uh, exact value. And for t is bigger than zero, we use the neural network value, neural network value. And the loose function can also be get from the uh, weak formula. And we also try semi-discrete uh, scheme and fully discrete scheme here. And the flux is used the golden law flux. Mm. And this is the uh, result. Where we can see that the discrete method also have a better result than semi-discrete method. Actually, semi-discrete method have a, a semi-discrete scheme have a really bad result here. Uh, and uh, for the fully discrete method, if we use a final screen, we have get a better solution. Uh, and this is the solution qualify when t equals to one. The brown line is the exact solution. And uh, uh, we can find the final, uh, when the grid is fine enough, we can capture the uh, shock waves, um, shock, uh, the location of the shock waves very exactly, very accurately. So we come to the stochastic problem. And this is a linear conservation law with S um, random coefficient. The numeric solution is constructed uh, very similar as before, uh, except that we have uh, random coefficients as an input of the neural network. And uh, this is the loose function. We only use the for, uh, fully discrete method here because the semi-discrete method always don't give us good results. And uh, it's similar to, uh, as before, except that we have uh, uh, random coefficients, random variables as the coefficients here. And the results can be shown, uh, can be seen in this figure. Uh, when there are 100 random variables, we still get uh, accurate results. The magnitude of the expectation and the variance is about uh, 10 power minus, minus two. And uh, this figure shows the solution qualify. The pupil line is the, um, the left one is acceptation and the right one is the variance. The pupil line is the exact solution. And uh, you can see when the grid is fine, the, green, the, the red line, um, they gave a really good result from the figure. Okay, the, the final example is the stochastic Burgers equation, where we have stochastic uh, uh, random variables on the initial condition. Um, this is the deep uh, learning, uh, this is deep learning representation of the neural solution which is exactly the same as before. And uh, this is the numerical result. Uh, we can find that um, the, we can find the acceptation, uh, the, error, the, the error of the acceptation is very small, uh, where the magnitude, magnitude is about 10 power minus two, but the variance is not good enough 
especially when we have uh, 200 random variables. Yeah. This, this figure shows that the solution qualify when we have uh, 10 random variables where we can find the acceptation of the shock waves can be almost captured by the variance have a gap here, which is very obvious. So to, conclusion, uh, to conclude that uh, we get conclusion that um, we need to fully discourage the uh, equation and then do the learning. And uh, we also find the uh, convergent theme in the clock, uh, in the clock with respect to the edge, which is in the clock, uh, classical sense. And we give a neural network representation of the uh, numeric solution, and um, the loose function is in the L2, uh, is in the uh, um, least things. And we use Monte Carlo samplings to reduce the uh, computational cost. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for a very nice talk. So we have four minutes. So, anyone have some questions?